Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to Nectar, Sex, and Soul. I'm your host, Soraya Leonora, and I'm a holistic sex and relationship coach. This is a chance for us to get intimate, to reach far into the mystical, magical, erotic, tender, inspiring, vital, primordial depths of what it is to be human, what it is to express and inhabit these amazing bodies fully, and what it is to make love to the divine in everything we do. We'll be penetrating deeply into the nectar of what it is to be alive and turned on by life, how to transmute pain and hardship into pleasure and medicine, how to embody the union of polarities, including sex and spirit, and how to love every piece of ourselves wholeheartedly. This is a space where we don't just talk about the act of sex, but rather how sexual energy permeates every area of our lives as the seed of creation and the source from which we all came. Exploring sexuality in this way not only takes our sex lives to the next level, but is a catalyst for a life that turns us on in each and every moment, not just in the bedroom. Within you stirs a sexual vitality that is capable of so much more than you could possibly imagine. This is what we explore on Nectar, Sex, and Soul. Thanks for coming to play. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Nectar, Sex, and Soul. I'm your host, Soraya Leonora, and it's so lovely to have you all here today. I'm really excited to talk about a really big topic that I'm asked about so often today, and that is performance anxiety. And in my opinion, the biggest problem with performance anxiety is the term itself. It implies that sex is a performance when it's actually playtime. And so many people are treating sex like a performance to the point that we use the term sexual performance to describe how someone shows up as a lover. So we're conditioned to see sex as a performance or a show because most of the places that we learn about sex is through actual performances. So whether that's in the movies or porn or some other media, what we often see is a scripted performance. And it's usually not authentic expression of passion and connection between real lovers. They're usually actors or Even if they are real lovers, there's often still such an emphasis on it being a performance that needs to be engaging for an audience, for a viewer. And so a lot of those more subtle, nuanced, deeper moments of connection are not brought forth in the art of film. Some of the juiciest moments that we can share with a lover are where there's such a deep connection and we're breathing together and we're feeling each other. We're so deeply in sync and there's not a lot of movement going on. There can just be subtle movement or even stillness and it can be so exquisite and delicious, but that essence is typically not going to carry over well to film. And so often we see these dramatized accentuated expressions of sexuality that are meant to be louder and more captivating for somebody who's not actually there to experience to be watching. And a lot of times these performances totally skip over foreplay and all the other delicious elements of what it is to connect with somebody, to build desire, to have that sexual tension that isn't scripted, but that is raw and real and human. So most of us become deeply programmed by performance-based sex, and we internalize what we see, and we start to have these ideas of what we think sex is supposed to look like, what our bodies and our genitals are supposed to look like, and even thinking that our orgasms are supposed to look a certain way. So often we learn that women just like this instant, hard, fast pounding with no foreplay. I mean, almost every movie or show It's like there's a man who grabs the woman and they make out for a moment and they just frantically tear each other's clothes off and he puts her on a table and just plows into her and she instantly starts coming. And that's just not usually how it goes. It can go that way. 
but that's not usually the way of it. And this can program a lot of men to move forth much more quickly with a female lover than what she's actually ready for. And it can cause a lot of women to feel like they should be able to be these just ready to go instantly orgasming beings that can move at this fast pace when actually that's not usually how female bodies work. And then men can get this programming that they're supposed to stay rock hard while just pounding for hours, that they're supposed to have this huge cock. And there's all these ideas about what sex is supposed to look like, which creates pressure around how we're supposed to perform, how we're supposed to have sex. And our egos can get so wrapped up in it, like we have something to prove about ourselves. Of course, we all want to show up as the best lover we can and tap into profound states of pleasure and connection, but ideally that's from a place of playfulness and presence rather than performance. Yet since most of us learned about sex through staged performances, and this has set the standard for how we're supposed to act and what we're supposed to look like, we can get really lost in the pursuit of performance. So while skill is certainly an important piece of knowing how to navigate these incredible and mysterious human bodies, our presence is what's most important. You could have all the technique and think that you have all the moves, but if you're not present, if you don't know how to listen, if you're too wrapped up in performing and getting it right and being the best lover your lover's ever had, you're often going to miss the point. Because trying to make sex a performance takes us out of the present moment, the present experience, which takes us out of connection. And when sex unwittingly becomes an ego battle, rather than a connective act of presence, it becomes far less fun and we can get stuck in our heads and feel so much more pressure than pleasure. And guys, the truth is, Everyone has struggled with their sexuality in some way or another. No one just came out of the womb knowing what they're doing from the start. And there's no necessarily right or wrong way or one size fits all approach because each person and each moment is different. So even if you've been making love with the same person for 20 years, you are both different people in each moment. And so we never want to get in a space of feeling like we have someone all figured out and like we have this playbook or this trajectory of where we're going to go. There is no playbook. And as soon as we have a trajectory or an expectation of how sex is going to go, we're not present with the unique unfolding magic of the moment and the synergy being created between us and our lover. We're not feeling with our bodies or listening to our lover or our own sexual energy. We're not enjoying the rich textures of this five-course meal that we're experiencing with somebody because we're obsessing over dessert or a destination or some sort of target we're trying to hit. We have this one-track mind. We can have these blinders on. And if we are coming into sex with trajectory and expectation, this is where sex starts to get really boring and linear and routine and mechanical. And a lot of couples express that things start to get this way when they've been with someone for long enough. So I encourage you to let sex be playful and lighthearted. Be curious. Be communicative. Try new things. And let go of this concept that sex is a linear thing where orgasm is the climax that we're striving towards. A lot of times, rather than enjoying the journey, we can feel like there's this point, this goal we're trying to achieve. And oftentimes for couples where a man is involved, the male ejaculation is seen as the main point, the grand finale. And when we're so destination focused, we can actually miss the entire journey. And I see this happen with couples all the time. So if something isn't working the way that you wanted it to, if your body is not showing up the way you expected it to, or your lover's body isn't showing up the way you hoped it would, or just the whole flow between you and your lover is not going the way you hoped, 
Can you alchemize that obstacle into an opportunity to play in a new way, to let go of how you think it's supposed to be and show up for what is here now, dropping into deeper receptivity and connection and presence? So I think a big piece of performance anxiety is that we think if something's not working in the way we wanted it to, everything's ruined or it's going to be embarrassing or we're going to disappoint our lover. But you don't have to be hard to be able to play. There's plenty of ways to play, even if you're not hard or if you're not wet or if your lover isn't hard or wet. And it's important to play in these different ways. It's important to listen to the wisdom of the body. If it's not showing up in a certain way, there's always a reason for that. And I'm actually going to get into this really in depth in an upcoming episode. I'm going to dive deep into all of the ways that what we often call sexual dysfunctions are actually a mirror into what could be misaligned or what's needed in a situation or what's out of balance. They're not actually usually a problem. They're just the body's way of communicating. So for example, if you can't get hard, or you're not wet yet, maybe you need to come into deeper connection. Maybe you need to slow down and take your time and come back into your breath and your body. And there are all kinds of ways we can play and really build the sexual energy between us and deepen our connection. So many things we can do with our bodies besides just penetration or any of the other things we want to do that we feel require our bodies to show up in a certain way. So I encourage you to use limitation as an invitation to explore more creatively and non-linearly, to explore in a way that you never have before, like it's your first time instead of having a script. Get your mind out of the way and just let go. Don't let your ego cock block the magic. Let go of the anxiety of getting it right. Let yourself be moved by passion, by love, by pleasure in new ways. Take a different route than you're used to and recognize that there are such deeper, more fulfilling, beautiful ways that sexual expression can unfold very differently than what you've seen on a screen, which is often just barely scratching the surface of what's possible. So if you can just tap into the wisdom of the body and let it flow and let go of any preconceived ideas of what it's supposed to be, think outside the box, steer away from what's comfortable and what you're used to and open to new realm of possibilities, you'll be pleasantly surprised by what's possible. And it's so important to remember that you're working together in this experience. You're on the same team working towards a shared intention of pleasure, connection, play, fun. So we don't want to slip into feeling like we need to impress someone or we have to have it all figured out. We want to come back to being on the same team. So a few examples of this. Let's say that you contributed to pushing your man over the edge sooner than you wanted to because you weren't working with him to help him last longer. You weren't listening to his body and working as a team. So this is something that a lot of women can inadvertently do. They don't understand how challenging it is for a man to cultivate stamina. And if you're in your own world and you're not listening to where his body is at and you squeeze your pussy when he's right at his edge or you start jerking your hips around when he's in this very sensitive place and then he comes more quickly than you would have liked and you're mad at him for it or you're disappointed, this is going to create a negative feedback loop around his performance anxiety and it's going to put you into that place of feeling like you guys are opponents rather than working on the same team. And let's say as a man that you come before your partner feels complete, check in with them and just see what else they would like. See how else you could share and play and pleasure and connection. Ejaculation doesn't have to be the end of the party. Not being able to get or stay hard or not being able to get or stay wet don't have to be the end of playtime. So I challenge you to get more creative than that and see if, if that feels disappointing to you, can you start to think outside the box and take the pressure off? Because 
where there's pressure, there's going to be more anxiety. And our bodies typically aren't going to show up in the way that we want when we feel that there's pressure. So when we take the pressure off and we're not expecting it to go a certain way, everything can be more relaxed. And when the body's relaxed, there's way more space for pleasure to flow through. It's easier to cultivate stamina. It's easier to have more potent orgasms and to stay in deeper connection. So we really want to minimize the pressure involved. And some of the ways that we can do this are by bringing in curiosity, exploration, and lighthearted playfulness. These are essential to having fun with your lover. And a lot of times we're having sex to have fun, right? We want to have a good time. We want to enjoy ourselves and enjoy each other and experience pleasure. So we want to bring in these qualities of playfulness. And sometimes lovemaking isn't going to feel so playful. It can be more deep and serious, but hopefully from a place of heart and soul rather than ego and an obsession with getting it right. And tuning into your why behind sex can be really helpful for overcoming this problem of feeling like you have to get it right. And not just in general, but in each moment with each lover and each circumstance, getting really clear on our why can be incredibly illuminating and empowering. So are you using sex to substantiate your self-worth or impress your lover? This is really common. A lot of people use sex to substantiate themselves in some way. In our society, our desirability, our performance as a lover, and our ability to get laid can get really entangled with our sense of self-worth. And some people have sex out of some perceived obligation or because they're fawning, they don't know how to say no. Even being goal-oriented in our why, like wanting to get off or wanting to give our lover an orgasm, can cause us to miss the unique magic of each moment. And this is another topic that I'll speak on in a later episode as well. And really none of these reasons are going to make for a very fulfilling, enjoyable experience for either person. So are you using sex in any of these ways? Or is it a playground for saucy, sexy, sensual expression of love and lust for each other? A means to know each other more deeply and connect in a way that words can flirt with, but never really fully grasp. What happens when you come to sex with a desire to connect more deeply, to express your passion, to know yourself and your lover in new ways, to deepen communication? to share a journey together, to explore pleasure and play, to heal, to awaken your vitality and fully embody your divinity. What kind of space could these intentions create for unexpected magic, flow, and connection? How much more pleasure, presence, and play could you immerse yourself in if you let go of pressure, performance, and pretense? What happens... When we approach sex as playtime rather than showtime. And I want to invite you to really ponder this because this is a pretty mind blowing concept. How might we go about having sex if we had never seen anyone else do it? Literally, if we had never seen anyone else do it in person, in the movies, in porn, we had no idea what it looked like. To see other people have sex. Can you imagine the curiosity and the creativity, the true expression and embodied presence rather than trajectory, expectation, and performance that would come through? And I think about this a lot too when it comes to body image. What if there was no media? What if there was nothing that illustrated to us how our bodies were supposed to look? Would we even have insecurities around our bodies? I don't know. I don't necessarily think so. So many of the insecurities we have about our bodies are learned behaviors. Nobody came out of the womb thinking their penis was too small or wishing they had bigger breasts or not liking their legs, right? These are learned behaviors. There's something about society that told us we shouldn't like these parts of ourselves or we compared ourselves to what we saw in the media. 
So just imagine what sex might be like if you had never seen anyone else do it. Imagine if there was no imprint of how we're supposed to do it, how it begins or how it ends, just authentic communication and exploration between humans with a desire to connect and go on a journey together. How could this approach liberate us from any pressure to perform, any feeling of needing to prove something or achieve a specific result? How much deeper could we sink with a lover if we could be fully present in the moment? The erotic innocence that would be present, that childlike wonder of just exploring your own body and your lover's body for the first time ever. And I encourage you to play with this essence. What is it to show up to your own body and your lover's body as if it's the first time every time? Because our cells are constantly regenerating, our hormones are changing, our mood is changing, the setting is changing, the synergy and the chemistry that we have with someone in a given moment is changing. So we really are showing up to our body and our lover's body for the first time, where it is right here, right now, every time. So what is it to really embody that and to bring that curiosity, that wonder, that erotic innocence, to let it be play, to let it be fun, and to let any other emotions that want to arise come through, to keep it real and raw and to allow so much depth and beauty to be revealed to you, that you would miss if you were trying to get somewhere or do it like somebody else or do it in the way you think you're supposed to. And sex is also an incredible space for healing. There is so much healing that can happen in the space of feeling safe to be vulnerable with somebody, to share our body and our heart and our spirit and our energy with somebody, to be naked and raw, to move through our past insecurities, our past wounds and traumas, and to feel safe enough to show up as we are in a sexual space. There can be such potent healing that happens here. So it's not always about play and pleasure. One of my biggest discoveries in this path of work in my own journey is that sex is an incredible place to come to to heal all kinds of things, not just our sexual wounds, but all kinds of wounds. It's a place for energy to move, for tears to flow, for the body to relax and release and open and to let go of our masks, to totally come undone, to be in our most authentic expression, to come home to our truest self. So if we're too focused on pleasure, you know, even that is a goal in itself. If we're too focused on making it pleasurable or making it fun, we can miss the healing that wants to take place in those deeper realms. Sometimes a lot of grief wants to move through when we open that. Our emotions and our sexual energy both live in the sacral chakra. They are both connected to the waters that flow through us. So sometimes we just need to open pathways for energy to move. And if we're taking sex too seriously, then we can often miss the playfulness and the fun. So I invite you to just have an open mind and an open heart and allow that full spectrum to come through. Whether you're working through painful parts of yourself that you've been embarrassed about or you feel insecure about or whether you're focused on having fun and just recognizing that sex is messy sometimes and whatever arises is okay. Can you lean in and find your yes in the moment? Can you find a way that you can show up to the moment in a way that feels authentic to you? No one has it all figured out. No one. And we can't predict what's going to show up. So let go of your masks. Be yourself. Authenticity is the sexiest thing. So some of the most potent ways that I think we can work with these concepts that I've been talking about is number one, staying in your body. So often we are stuck in our head when we're having sex, especially if we're having anxiety about it. 
And a lot of times we experience sex in a way that's very in our head because it's in the realm of fantasy or it's very visual because of porn or movies. But we have sex with our bodies. So we need to stay in our body to really be able to track with our sexual energy, to be able to navigate it, to stay connected with our lover. A lot of times if we lose an erection or we lose our wetness or lubrication, it's often, not always, but it's often because we're just disconnected from the moment, from the body. We're too stuck in our head. And so we can't be tracking with that energy. Where attention goes, energy flows. So we want our attention to be tracking with our sexual energy in the body. So the breath is the easiest way to stay connected to the body. (sighs) Deep, full belly, full body breathing. Listening to the body to the moment, to your lover's body, to what's unfolding between you two. Listening is so, so key. And slowing the fuck down is so paramount. So many people are moving way too quickly that they miss the moment. They're not listening. They're skipping over the finer details. It takes a certain finesse to really catch all the nuances, to really deeply sync with someone. And one of the areas that I see this show up a lot is dancing with people. I do not like moving into a deep connection or contact with someone on the dance floor if they're dancing way too fast in a way where I can feel they're not listening to my body. There's too much momentum. There's not a tracking with one another. And so my body doesn't want to open or to trust because they're not listening In order to trust and to sync together, we have to slow down and really find that point of harmony, that deep connection. And then speed can happen from there if we want once that deep listening and trust and connection are established. But without that, it can feel really frantic and discombobulating. We can lose ourselves in that connection. We can end up pushing boundaries without realizing we're doing it. So... It's essential that we slow down and breathe and listen and stay in the body, build trust, fine-tune our communication, whether that's verbally, kinesthetically, energetically, really attuning to each other's nervous systems and making sure we're on the same page. So this is really about finding the points of harmony that feel good for you and your lover. We don't want to get too stuck on what they're thinking about us, that we abandon our own pleasure. And we don't want to get so stuck in our head about how we're performing that we're losing track of them. We really want to try to stay present with both people, both bodies and the breath simultaneously. And that can be a lot to focus on. So that's where slowing down and breathing is going to be key. So... Again, feeling into your why, your intention. Why are you having sex? Why are you drawn to do this? What do you want out of this? And not like a goal. So I'm going to talk about this later, the difference between an intention and a goal and how this shows up in the bedroom. I'll talk about this in a different episode. And we don't want to think about this like, what am I trying to get out of this? But What is my intention in having this experience? Where am I coming from? Is this coming from a place of needing validation? Is it coming from a place of desiring connection? Is it coming from a place of wanting to play? What are you bringing to the table and why? So just getting clear on all of this, really planting your seeds of intention. What are you bringing to your sexual experience? Stay connected to your why your body, your breath, your lover. Keep listening. Don't take yourself so seriously and the rest will follow. I'll also be talking more about the art of listening in later episodes. So there's a lot here and we can't unpack it all in this episode. But if you want to go deeper into this, if you really want to take a deep dive and master the art of play and stop spinning out on performance anxiety, I have an amazing online self-study course called Vital Confidence for Men. And 
it's an incredibly deep journey into moving through performance anxiety, any body image insecurities, cultivating greater stamina, stronger erections, and ultimately doing all of this through cultivating a deeper, more authentic connection with your body, learning the language of your sexual energy, being able to track with its subtleties, and cultivating the power of choice in the way that you relate with your sexual energy. So you can find that on my website if that's something you're curious about. And we'll be diving deeper into some of the topics that I mentioned today in later episodes, so do stay tuned. And if you loved this, if there's someone that you know could really benefit from this, please go ahead and share it with them. Also, if you're listening on Spotify, if you're listening from the mobile app on your phone, I would so appreciate it if you could hit the five stars. You do need the most up-to-date version of Spotify to do so. And if you're listening on Apple, I would be so grateful if you could leave a review. So I hope this was helpful for you and wishing you all an incredible time out there playing with yourselves, with your lovers, and allowing sex to be an expansive, beautiful experience that you get to craft exactly how you want to, rather than having to follow a script or get it right or do it a certain way. All right, so much love to all of you. I hope you have a beautiful day. Ciao. Thank you so much for dropping into Nectar, Sex, and Soul with me today. It's been a pleasure to connect with you. If this episode lit you up or illuminated something impactful for you in some way, I invite you to subscribe, leave a review, and share it with someone you feel would love to hear it. To learn more about my work, check out SoreyaLeonara.com, sign up for my newsletter, and follow me on Instagram and YouTube, where I share tons of free content, special offers, and ensure you're the first to know about my new offerings. I offer private coaching as well as courses, workshops, and retreats, so be sure to stay in touch if you'd like to go deeper together. Thank you, loves. Have a gorgeous day. Ciao.